Hi, it's Bruce Ritter from the Sacramento Botanical Garden, along with my camera person, Amy, from Natomas Garden and Arts Club. I give you her last name, but I can't pronounce it. Um, <laughs> and this is Can You Take It? Episode 4, Progress in the Garden. So, let's see what's going on. We're here at the Nino's Community Garden, and we're going to see how our garden is doing. But first, let's take a look at some other people's gardens and see what they're growing. So come on down this way. Here's something I just saw. I don't know what this is. You stumped the botanist. This is some sort of melon. I mean, it reminds me of a bitter melon, but I don't know. Uh, we'll find out one of these days. They have a lot of that growing around here. Let's come on down a bit. Here's someone growing Swiss chard. Not one of my favorites, but some people like it. Over here we have some hot peppers. Um, personally, I'm not a pepper person, but I think they're hot peppers just in the way they look right now. Behind it is an eggplant. Here's the eggplant flower. Fun fact, did you know that eggplants, peppers, tomatoes, and potatoes are all in the same family? It's the deadly nightshade family. My botany teacher told us that way back when they tried to assassinate George Washington by feeding him tomatoes in some food and because they thought tomatoes were poisonous. And not only were they not poisonous, it was the beginning of the American pizza craze. <laughs> that part's not true. I don't know if the whole story's true. So let's go on down this way. This is a weed that's growing all over this garden. I don't know what this is, but it is pretty, but it is weedy. Weeds can be beautiful. Let's come on down here. Now, before we show you some eggplant, some people dislike eggplant, some people like eggplant, some people love eggplant. This person here, he wants to marry eggplant because he's got more eggplant than you could shake a eggplant parmesan hero at. Let's take a look at what they got here. Take a look here. So here's a white eggplant. You think of eggplants normally purple. But this actually looks like an egg. So, ergo the name eggplant. Let's see, there's a yellow one over, no that looks white, never mind. Yeah, they, this is yellowish, but it looks like it's going to turn white. They seem to be scrolling just white eggplant here. Let's see what's down this way. Um, this is interesting because this looks sort of like a tomato. The plant looks sort of like an eggplant. The flowers look like a pepper. It's a, it's a temeper plant. <laughs> it's crazy. Um, here's some, I think this might be lemongrass. I'm not 100% sure, but it looks like it. It smells like it. And you know what they say, if it looks like lemongrass and smells like lemongrass, maybe it's <laughs> lemongrass. Over here, we have some pumpkins growing. there. So those are pretty big pumpkins. I think those are pumpkins more for cooking than for showing, which makes more sense because pumpkins take a lot of space and a lot of time and to to spake all that space time and fertilizer for something that you're going to just stick on your front step and then some kids going to come and smash on Halloween to me seems like a waste of space. <laughs> Let's come down this way more hot peppers. A lot of people here seem to like eggplants and hot peppers. Maybe there's some dish or something or some cuisine that they use. Here is a ripened hot pepper. Did you know that some peppers are so hot that in order to harvest them you have to use gloves? And for far be it, or if you're the person who doesn't wear gloves and then has something in your eye, you'll be miserable <laughs> or your nose. Um, here's some pole beans. Look at the color on that. That's pretty cool. It's got green and purple stripes. Let's see. Over here. A lot of a lot of people are growing marigolds here. And A because they're fun and easy, and B because supposedly marigolds help fight nematodes. And while they do, you're not gonna the marigold here is not gonna help 
any nematodes in the ground there. It's just, you know, too far away. For comparison, these are bush beans. Now, bush beans and pole beans, they're basically the same, except bush beans are shorter and pole beans are longer. Um, if you grow bush beans, you might notice that some varieties actually grow sort of tall and could use support. These don't need it, but I've grown some that do. Let's come on down. We're going to go look at the Matomas Garden Arts Club garden. We'll take a quick look here. Some more peppers. Um, there's some red peppers starting over there. More eggplant. You know, one of the nice things, I'm just trying to get as close as you can hear me, one of the nice things about having a nice plot like that, like this, is that you can grow plants that are space hungry. Over here, they're growing some squash here. I don't see squash yet, but I mean, you can see this is a plant that needs room. Here's some squash. I don't know what type this is. It looks like a zucchini squash, except it may not be, but there it is. So let's come to the Natomas Garden Arts Club garden. Come on down. So this plot is the plot by the Natomas Garden Arts Club. You can tell because of the flag. And we're going to start with their cutting garden. Turn it around, but whatever. Um, I tried to get it. So, okay. She'll cut this part. Um, Teresa, do your job. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so here we are at the Natomas Garden Arts Club's garden, and it's a beautiful garden. They got it in late, and even though they got it in late, it's looking great. And you know, our growing season here is so long that you can get things in late. I mean, I just planted some cucumbers just the other day, back where I'm from. You wouldn't plant cucumbers at the end of July and expect to get a great crop. You might if it stays warm, but if you have a cool September, you know, you might not get them. But here, we could plant, and it's, you could still plant things. Well, look at these beautiful zinnias. When I was a kid, I'm coming over close to here. Yeah. When I was a kid, Zinnias were the first plants that I ever grew. The little Boy Scouts came around in the neighborhood and sold seeds. Those were the days when people came around and knocked on your door. You didn't say no soliciting. Now you would not have Boy Scouts coming door to door to sell seeds. But zinnias were the first plants I bought. And I was like seven and I planted them. And frankly, zinnias need a lot of sun. They, don't, they are drought tolerant. But look at the quality of these flowers that they're getting here. The plants are so clean. That's a humongous flower. This is like what you see on the seed catalog cover, which is what they call a, a, a garden of dreams because you're lucky if it gets this good. But these are great. The beautiful orange, the little yellow inside. Here's the one that I love. I'm going to talk about those in a second. But look at the size of this one. It's all ruffled. Keep your hand there for a second. You see, it's as big as my hand, and I've got big hands. Um, right here is bachelor's button or centaura. There's a lot of little honeybees on it. And you notice for the most part the bees don't bother you because they're too busy. One might say they're busy as a bee, but you know, to coin a phrase. Let's come down this way. We've got these really cool cosmos with another bee in it. And it's got this really great bicolor, it's sort of semi-double, really cool. Cosmos, super easy to grow. More zinnias. So when you plant your garden, you know, plant, save some space for a cutting garden. This, wouldn't it be great every day you cut some more flowers, bring them inside, and you have them indoors? Because you know, when it's 105 degrees, you don't want to be outside. Pollinators 
attract pollinators for your yeah, bees vegetables. Are, um, zinnias are very good for pollinator gardens. They attract bees. Um, they attract butterflies, and that's always nice. Our tomatoes, they are growing great. You don't see a lot of tomatoes on them for a couple of reasons. Number one is they pick them as soon as they're ripe. But number two, and I think in this case, the garden went in a little late. So the tomatoes are just starting. There's a cool one forming here. This is one of those purplish blackish tomatoes. It will, um, it looks like a plum tomato, but it has a really, at first I thought this was an eggplant based on the size of the tomato but obviously it's a tomato if behind you behind the on the other side of tomatoes we're growing some squash over here I don't know variety of this there's no label which is but oh there's the label delicata squash I would mention that it really is a good idea to label what you're growing so you know what it is for next year because otherwise you know if you're unsuccessful with something you might accidentally plant it again and I've done that and if you're successful with them, you want to know what it is so you can plant it again. Now here, we have watermelons. Watermelons are in the squash family. And just like squash, you need male and female flowers. Now you might wonder, how do they get seedless watermelons? If they are not producing seed, how do they get watermelons? Well, they come from a seed producing variety, but the thing about seedless watermelons is that they need a pollinator plant. So if you're growing seedless watermelons and you do not grow watermelon that produce seed or pollen to make the seeds, then you will not get seedless watermelon. You will get no watermelon. So it's really important when you plant seedless watermelon to plant a pollinator. To come on over here, you will see some baby watermelons. Well, well, you will see a watermelon that would have produced, except it's been eaten by a, by a bug. Here's another one. This little, little thing, that's going to become your monstrous watermelon. I mean, how cool is that? Over here, we have some pole beans. Um, this is pole bean Monte Gusto, which is actually a yellow bean. I planted these the second week in July, and they will grow up this fence. They will actually exceed the height of the fence and hang over, and it will need more support. But they produce mad, like mad. One of the things I did not mention before about pole beans is bush beans produce for two to three weeks and they produce relatively early. Pole beans produce for four, six, even up to eight weeks and they give you more. Not just more in the sense of longer period, but you'll get more. So pole beans are great if you don't have space, you can grow up instead of out and they give you more fruit or more beans they give you for a longer period so they're actually even though you have to set the staking up or you can do a tent you can do a lot of different things i'll show you in a little bit what someone else did but you are actually going to use less energy and less time to grow pole beans than bush beans because frankly if you're a lazy gardener you can just plant them once and you get a long period of harvest whereas bush beans you have to plant every couple of weeks um, I plant my pole beans once a month, just so I have an ongoing supply. Over here we have some zucchini. And to come on down, we'll show you our zucchini. No zucchinis on this that are ripe at the moment. They may have picked them off yet, but again, here's how you tell a female... Oh, zucchinis are spiny. Here's a female flower. It's got a little zucchini at the base. That's the ovary. Here's a male flower. It's just got a stem. You need both, or you will not get zucchinis. People often wonder, well, what if I am growing zucchinis near my cucumbers and near my watermelon? Will I get cucumber melons? The answer is no, not this year, because the zucchini is right here. He just needs the pollination to grow. But the seeds, if they're pollinated by this watermelon, next year those seeds will be a hybrid of zucchini plus watermelon. They'll be zucchini melons, or they'll be who knows what. But the plants this year, you do not have to worry about what pollinates it. Corn is another story. Corn, you're eating the seeds. Let's look at the corn here. I'm trying to get where the sun's not on. Yeah, we're going a little long, but you know, we'll take care of it. So, 
So, corn, by the way, corn is a grass. It's just a tall grass. Here's some corn here. When you eat corn, you're eating the seeds. Now, the seeds are the next generation. So, if you're growing variety A of corn next to variety B of corn, they will cross, and the corn will be a hybrid of those two, which you might not want, especially if you're growing super sweet corn. Super sweet corn cannot be grown near standard corn and be expected to be as sweet. So it has to self-pollinate. So that's just one of the little things that you might not know. Um, by the way, corn grows much better when it's in a block versus a row because it's wind pollinated. Um, I love corn. You don't get many per plant, but if you have space, they're a great plant. And another reason to have a community garden is you can take all the space for corn. Well, I think that might be it. Let's take a look at one of our peppers, though. Here we have some bell peppers. They're just starting. Some, oh, by the way, uh, another fun fact. Green peppers are green because you picked them when they were green. Red peppers are green peppers that turn red. Purple peppers are another variety of same plant, just they, they turn purplish. Um, they may or may not start out green. My purple peppers start out purple and then turn blackish. Um, yellow peppers, same thing. They just ripen to yellow or ripen to orange. But they all start out either green or darkish purple. You'll notice the habanero peppers or the little Thai peppers before also started out green. And I think that's it from the Natomas Garden Arts Club. So enjoy your weekend, make sure you garden, make sure you weed or put down mulch and make sure you enjoy your garden. Pick a few